So I've been reading Matt Hackett's book, How to Make a Video Game All by Yourself. And in the book, there's a section about applying oil. Basically, the idea is that if your game is doing something small that reduces fun, you should eliminate it. The example that Matt gives in the book is, when Link is moving by impassable objects, players benefit from a subtle system that gently nudges Link away from the obstacle, enabling smooth passage. In games where this mechanic is not oiled, the player avatar bumps up against the wall, unable to move forward, just barely caught on the corner. This can create a frustrating player experience, doesn't feel good, and benefits from being oiled. While reading this, I realized my game has this exact problem and I need to apply oil to it. If you're new to this channel, welcome. I've been spending the last year making a retro 2D tank game using Godot. In this game, the player controls this blue tank on a top-down map that has these round circles which are trees that block movement. The tank can only move in four directions using the WASD keys. The problem happens when the tank is positioned in such a way that its rectangular collision shape clips the edge of the tree's round collision shape. It gets stuck. To get unstuck, the player has to turn the tank sideways, move a pixel or so to the left, and then move forward again. This is very annoying and can be deadly in the middle of a battle when the enemies are swarming and shells are flying everywhere. A deeper technical reason this is happening is because I'm using Move and Collide to move my tanks. If I just switch to Move and Slide, then the tank will slide past the trees. But I really don't like how Move and Slide looks and feels for this game. I prefer the more retro, blocky feeling that comes with Move and Collide. The player's avatar is a tank, so it should feel heavy and blocky. Not like this. So the solution that I came up with is to use Godot's raycast. I added three raycasts to the front of the tank. A driver side raycast, a passenger side raycast, and a middle turret raycast. These raycasts will detect if there is a tree in front of the tank. If there is a tree, but the middle turret raycast does not detect the tree, then the game should move the tank diagonally to get unstuck, even if the player is only pressing forward. If the middle turret raycast detects the tree, then the player is directly driving into it and there is no need to move diagonally. Now a tricky part is calculating the diagonal move direction that I need at runtime. To illustrate, if the tank is heading north and it hits a tree on the passenger side, then the diagonal that I need is this way, which in Godot would be a vector 2, negative 1, negative 1. But I need a different vector 2 if the tank is heading west. In this case, the diagonal that I need is this way, and that would be a vector 2, negative 1, 1. And the values are different again if the hit is on the driver's side. One way I could have solved this is to just not calculate it at runtime. I could have made a table of all the possible values for a given heading inside, and the game could just check this table whenever it occurs. If placed in a dictionary, then this solution can actually be very fast. However, a more elegant solution in my opinion is to use the power of vector math at runtime. When a tank is headed north, its vector in Godot is 0, negative 1. If the tree is on the passenger side, the game needs to calculate the diagonal, vector negative 1, negative 1, which is this point right here. One way to get this vector is to add a vector facing left of the heading, vector negative 1, 0, to the heading. When I realized that this point is always to the left of whatever heading the tank is going, I realized my solution. For passenger side hits, take the current heading and add to that the heading rotated left negative 90 degrees. For driver side hits, it's the same formula, but rotated right, positive 90 degrees. We can check this in other scenarios. If the tank is headed west, it's negative one zero is its heading. That vector rotated left is zero one. Added together and we get negative one one, which is this diagonal right here. 
for driver side hits, it's the same thing, except we rotate 0, negative 1 to the right, 1, 0, and then we get 1, negative 1, which is this diagonal right here. So this might be a big duh for seasoned game developers, but I don't work with XY vectors in my day job, so this was all very new and interesting to me. Anyway, here's what it looks like in GDScript. I have the ray casts in its own scene called Diag Slider. This class gets a reference to its three ray casts on ready. This check function is what checks for collisions and calculates the appropriate diagonal vector. I use a vector to infinite as a null vector in this game. If the function that's calling check function gets a vector to infinite, then it shouldn't do anything. Finally, here's the formula in GD script form to calculate the diagonal vector if the hit is on the passenger side. Here it is if the hit is on the driver's side. So with that in place, here's how it looks in gameplay. I only enable raycasts after the collision happens and disable them when there is no collision. I also reduce the speed of the tank when it is moving diagonally to retain that retro blocky feel. Alright, that's it for this devlog. Let me know if you like this deeper dive into a mechanic than my previous devlogs. Also, if you like this type of content, you can subscribe. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.